Welcome back everyone to the Blazor Hybrid Beginner Series. I'm your host, James Montemagno, a program manager on the developer community team here at Microsoft. And so far, we've learned all about what Blazor Hybrid is and how it works inside of .NET MAUI. We've gone ahead and got our developer machine set up, and we even created our first project and took a look at the entire architecture of a Blazor Hybrid application running with .NET MAUI. Now we want to start building our application. So today, we're going to build a full to-do application that saves data locally to the file disk wherever the application is running. We're then going to take a look later on in future videos of how to access native APIs like connectivity, for example, and how to, how to share this code with a Blazor web app too. But before we get there, let's just start building our application. So let's head over to Visual Studio and get going. All right, here I'm inside of Visual Studio 2022, and we have our file new project, so that Blazor hybrid app. We have a few pages like counter, fetch data, and our index. And the first thing we want to do is add a new page. So here I can say add a new Razor component. And Razor components are pages that we can add with special markup. I'm going to go ahead and just call this to do. So it matches the same as our other Razor components here. And we can see that this has an href of three and our code block. So to give it an href here, I can say at page to do. There we go. So by default, it's just a component with no route, but adding this page route will enable us to navigate to it or put it into our navigation with an href. So that's important to know. So that is how we're going to go ahead and navigate to that automatically, else it's just a component that I could reference from other pages. So now that we have this page set up, let's go ahead and actually add it to our main navigation and take a look and see what that looks like in the app. So here under shared, we're going to see our main layout and our nav menu. So if I go ahead and expand this a little bit, we can see that we have three pages here. So we have our, our main nav menu CSS class. We have a toggle nav click, which goes ahead and collapses it automatically or not. And then we have three pages. We have the home page, we have another counter page, and we have this fetch data. These are nav links, and we can see that the href for each of these is the same as the counter and the fetch data. So here's the counter, for example, there. We can go ahead and copy this last one, this fetch data in here. I'm going to change the word fetch data to to do's. There we go. And the href to to do. There we go. So now that our href matches our route, the Blazor hybrid system will automatically pick that up for us. So now I can go ahead and debug this locally on my machine. And what we'll see is another uh, item right here. To do, to do. Fetch data, to do, everything is good to go. Now, let's go ahead and start building out our application a little bit. So under the data, we have our weather forecast and weather service. I'm going to go ahead and add two new classes. So add class, and I'm going to say to do item, just like that. And I'm also going to add another class called our to do service. And that service is what will enable us to save information directly to the file system. So we'll take a look at that in a little bit. All right, first the to do item, let's keep it simple. I'm going to first go ahead and simplify our namespaces right there. And I'm going to get rid of all these using statements. We don't need that. Perfect. All right, so what is inside of our to do item? Well, the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to say public class, just like that. And what I then can do is say, well, every to do item needs a string and a Boolean for is done. So actually, surprisingly, GitHub Copilot is pretty close to what I want. So we're just going to give it a title here and is done. We're going to assign it to false by default and we'll assign this to string.empty by default. Perfect. All right. So we have title and we have is done. Not bad. So that is going to be our to do item that we're going to iterate over and add new items. So let's head back to our to do.razor. All right, so now what we want to do is figure out a way of displaying a list of our to do items inside of our razor page. So the first thing we need to do is we need to actually create a list of to do item right here. And we're going to call that to do's. There we go. So to do item, to do's, and we're going to say, let me create a new list. Perfect. Now notice here that it actually doesn't know what my to do item is. So we're going to bring in the using and that's going to add it automatically for me. So there we go. We're good to go. 
Now what I can do is I can say, let's create an unordered list. And I'm going to say at for each. And in this case, each to do in to do's. Perfect. And now I can just go ahead and display each of those items. Now for now, I'm just going to give it a line item here. And that's going to bind to to do dot. And I have access to my different properties, such as is done or title, for example. Perfect. Now, if I run this application, it's actually not going to do very much because I have no items in my list. So let's go ahead and create a few more items here. So I'm going to create an input. There we go. And I'm going to say placeholder. And let's say something to do. Right, so that's going to be an input that I can go ahead and bind to here in a little bit. You can also say button, and let's say the button is add to do, right? So that we just add it, and it's going to go ahead and add that item for me automatically. All right, so the next thing we need to do is figure out how to add some item into my list here uh, when I click on this button. So let's go down and create a void of add to do. And we're going to go ahead at some point, you know, do this, right? Add it to the list, right? So that'll be good. And now what I can do is on my button, I can say at click. So when that's clicked, and that's going to call specifically add to do. Perfect. So whenever someone clicks that button, it's going to go ahead and call this method. And we're going to add that item into our list. So what are we going to bind to on this input? Well, we can go ahead and create a string of new to do, just like that. And then we can bind this input field. So I'm going to say bind here, and that's going to be to new to do. So this is great. Whenever someone enters text into that input field, it's going to bind automatically to this new to do. And then whenever someone clicks this button, this on click bind, will automatically call this method of add to do. So that's pretty awesome. So now what we need to do is actually fill this in. So I'm going to say if string dot is null or white space. So if someone hasn't entered anything, so is null or white space, and I can say new to do, let me just go ahead and return. All right, so don't do anything if it's empty. Then we're just going to add it into the list. So here I'm going to say to do's dot add. Perfect. And I can create a new to do item. Perfect. And specifically, I can set the title on it to new to do. Perfect. Just like that. So we've added that into the list. We've done that. And then we can go ahead and say new to do equals string dot empty. Just so we clear it out. Now, the Blazor binding system will automatically handle this for us. It'll refresh that list. It'll automatically clear out that input box as well, which is really, really great. So let's just go ahead and see that in action. And then we'll go ahead and give the flexibility to check and uncheck an is done option as well, which would be really, really cool. So again, this is going to be the starting point of our application. So here is our application running. We can see something to do. I'll say add check box and click add to do. Perfect. There we go. And in fact, we can add breakpoints inside of Visual Studio, go back to our running application and say, check out debugger, click to do, and we're going to hit a breakpoint right here. We can hover over this new item, see the property, and we can go ahead and step through it. So let's go ahead and do that. Perfect. Really cool. All right. So now we're getting a little bit further, but we do want to give the flexibility to check one of these items and slash it out. So let's go ahead and do that. Perfect. So let's go back up here and under this to do item, we can add more flexibility here. So I'm going to go in and inside the li, instead of just doing the title, I'm going to do li. There we go. There we go. Perfect. And what I can now do is say input, and I'm going to say type, and I'm going to give this a checkbox. And this is nice because this input down here is text by default, but this can be a checkbox. And I'm going to bind the check here specifically to the is done property. So I'm going to say to do dot is done. Very cool. Just like that. I can then also do another input. And this one will be at bind equals to do dot title. 
So this means not only can I bind this to the is done to check it in and out, we can additionally, on this input, change it in real time, which is really, really nice. Now, another thing that would be kind of nice to do is actually see how many items we have left. So up in this to do, I can also do some more data binding. I'm going to say at to do's dot count and use some link here and say, show me the count of to do items where they are not done. There we go. Just like that. So this will not only show to do, it will also display a count here for me automatically. Awesome. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like now. So I'm going to come back up. I'm going to go over and back here. And we can go ahead and say hot reload to do. So I hit save and we can see that hot reload in this case isn't available. So we're just going to go ahead and stop debugging and we're going to go ahead and relaunch it. So I made significant amount of changes to the code. So it's going to have me relaunch it really quick here. Perfect. So now I can go to to do's and we can see that there's zero currently. And now I can go in and say, test this out. Awesome. We can see we have a checkbox here. We have test this out. We can say, learn about .NET MAUI. Awesome. Here we get two automatically. I can say, build awesome hybrid apps, add to do there. And now we can see this. I can also check these off and we can see that automatically that count changes for us, which is really, really neat, right? So that's pretty awesome. Cool. Now notice though, that whenever I leave and come back, it clears it out. We don't want that. We want to go ahead and save this. Now, there are many, many ways of doing this, right? So ideally, you would create a backend web API. This might be a server, saving it there. You might save it in a SQL database. You might connect it to Cosmos DB or some other backend back and forth. But we're just going to save this disk really quick and see how that works. So, so let's take a look really quick and implement this functionality. So again, I'm going to stop debugging. And we can note here the weather forecast service for example, is going off and this is just returning some data, right? Now, we could create something like this, but instead of just returning data, we could save that information and we could store it in memory or on disk. So I'm going to go over here and go into my to-do service. And again, I can go ahead and clean this up a little bit and we have a public, uh, public to-do service. Awesome. Now, I'm going to go ahead and bring this code in and walk through it just because it is a little bit much. So let's go ahead and grab this here and paste it in. Perfect. Awesome. So we have our hybrid to do app.data namespace, and I'm using system text JSON. Now, this is actually a really simple service. All, all it does is go off and it creates the file path. Here, I'm getting a special folder, which is just the application data. And I'm going to save one JSON file, which is items.json. And this is great if I'm an app because I'm just saving it locally here. And actually, it's really, really simple. I have two methods, one called saved items, which you pass in the items you want to save. And it writes all the text using the built-in JSON serializer to that file. I also have a load items here, which checks to see if the file exists. And if it doesn't, it just returns an empty list. Else, it re reads all that information from the file and deserializes it. So just about 20 lines of code, and I'm getting JSON serialization deserialization simply using system.io. Now, since .NET MAUI has a .NET runtime and .NET can run there, system.io works, right? So I can check all of the different things that are running on iOS, Android, or Mac. So we can now go ahead and inject this service. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to first go into my Solution Explorer and go into Maui Program. And here we can see that we have our weather forecast service. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say, well, let me go ahead and use the to-do service. There we go. And since these are in the same exact uh, namespaces, we can see that this using statement was brought in. Cool. Now what we can do on our to-do.razor is I'm going to say at inject. I'm going to say to-do service, just like that. I'm going to say to do service. There we go. Now, what I can say is whenever I add a new item, uh, we could save it or we could probably add another button. So I'm just going to add another button here. I'm going to say save. There we go. Let's do that. Perfect. I'm going to say save. And now what I can do is I can say void save, just like that. And I can say to do service dot and I can say save items. 
And just like that, I'm going to pass in the to do's. Awesome. And done. One line of code to save the items. Now, we'll also want to load these items when the page loads, like when it's initialized. So let's go ahead, add a little bit of code into the initialization of this page. So whenever the app starts or when I navigate to and from. So here I can go and say override. And there is an on initialize or on initialize async. So here I'm just going to say on initialize. It's going to call the base constructor. And then I can say uh, var items. And I'm going to say to do service dot load items. Perfect. Now all I need to do is add these items into my to do list. So I'll say to do's dot add range. And I'll say items. Perfect. Done. Now I can go ahead and run this again. And when our application loads up, it's going to go ahead and see if that file exists. If it does, awesome. It'll go ahead and read that data. We shouldn't have anything there yet. Else now we'll have a save button that will save those items uh, automatically for us. So here we go. Here's our application. I'm going to go into do's. We have no items. I'm going to say save items. Boom. Access APIs. Boom. I'm going to check one off. I'm going to hit save. Now when I go back and I go forth, it automatically loads it, all right? So if I go ahead and add a breakpoint here, let me go back into my running application. I can click off, click back on, and boom, I have my items right here in my list automatically for me. That's really, really cool. Now here, like I said, this is just saving that to disk. However, of course, I could be calling a backend service with HTTP client. I could be accessing a SQLite database, uh, Cosmos DB, SQL Server, anything like that automatically through a web API, or just go ahead and saving this into a local SQL Lite database, for example. Now, let's see what happens when I run this on Android, because this is a multi-platform hybrid application. So let's go ahead and stop debugging. And I'm going to go ahead and now select my Android emulator and hit debug. Now, this is really cool. I'm not making any code changes, right? I'm just simply selecting Android as my deployment target. And what we should see is that the exact same page exists, all the exact same functionality exists, including saving that file to disks. So let's go ahead and give this a second to compile up our native Android app and deploy it to our emulator. All right, our application is up and running. Here's our splash screen just that we saw in the previous video. But now we have another item to do's. When I tap on that, we can see it hits the breakpoint, right? Now we don't have any items inside of here. So let's go ahead and continue on. And now I can go in and I can say, check it on Android. Hit add to do. There we go. And of course, I can resize this a little bit. There we go. And I can say, uh, eat something. There you go. Probably want to do something at some point here. And now I can check and uncheck these. There we go. And I can hit save. So it's going to save it locally right in, inside of my Android application. If I go out, hit fetch data, come back into my to do's, we can see that I now have two items just right here, like we saw. Eat something. I haven't done it yet. So I'm going to hit continue. And now we have our same exact application running, but running here inside of Android, which is really awesome. All right, there we go. We've started to build out our Blazor hybrid application, leveraging .NET MAUI to get our Windows, Android, iOS, and Mac applications up and running. Now from here, we can start to blend in some native APIs, native user interface, and start to share code with our Blazor web app as well. And we're going to do all that in the next few episodes. So stay tuned for even more Blazor hybrid goodness right here in the Blazor hybrid beginner series.